Hello there. Resentment is one of the strongest hooks that anchors us to the past. But this hook is even stronger if it's ignored. For that reason, it's critical to face resentment directly and to create resolve. Resentment is a state of being in pain as a result of perceiving that you have been treated wrongly, unfairly, and unjustly. It usually involves not feeling willing or able to accept something or someone that you reject. I call it a state of being because it is not an emotion in and of itself. Instead, it is like a soup of different emotions all associated with being treated unfairly. Emotions like dumbfounded, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness. One of the main challenges as far as resentment is concerned is that it instantly converts itself to distrust. To understand all about trust, I want you to watch my video on YouTube titled, What is Trust and How to Build Trust in Relationships? Trust is essentially the ability to rely on the fact that somebody is going to capitalize on and consider your best interests. Now, think about being treated unfairly, unjustly, or wrongly. Obviously, someone's proved to you that you cannot rely on them to capitalize on and consider your best interests. That's why resentment comes with so much distrust. This bitter distrust is usually what people are feeling in someone when they say that someone can't let go of resentment. You will find that it's easier to let go of something if it doesn't have a major impact on your present or your future. But when it comes to chronic resentment, you will find that usually it involves some unjust treatment that does have a big negative impact on your present or your future. For example, if your husband or wife spends all the money in your account on gambling, that may mean that you lose your house in the present and that you can't afford to put your kid through college in the future. Even if these kind of big consequences don't exist, distrust still exists. This means you will feel closed off and like an enemy to that person in your life now, and you will expect them to betray you again in the future. Now, fair versus unfair and wrong versus right is a matter of perspective. It is a highly subjective concept. However, as it applies to resentment, it's important to know that there may be times when you have been treated unfairly or felt like that, and you actually have been treated unfairly. Other times where, objectively, you'll feel like you've been mistreated and objectively perhaps someone did in fact treat you well. The thing is, is it's still a valid feeling. You can still feel resentment regardless of how right or wrong you are about being treated unfairly. It is tempting to think that your struggle with resentment is all relative to some recent thing in the distant past which is causing you to feel unjustly treated. However, if strong resentment is present, then there is almost always strong infiltration from past experiences. In other words, earlier experiences with being treated unfairly, not being considered by others, being disregarded, and having your boundaries violated. Before we launch into what to do about your resentment, we have to acknowledge that there is always a positive reason why we're attached to something, something that we're getting out of not letting go of something. As it applies to resentment, Resentment is really the unwillingness or inability to forgive. Letting go or forgiving gives most people the feeling that they simultaneously have to let go of the unmet need to be treated fairly and justly in a way that creates trust. And so, in order to honor their need to have just and fair treatment, they will not forgive. Resentment essentially can be like a wall that a person uses to protect themselves and try to get their needs met. A person may keep resentment as both a boundary and a personal reminder, as if to say, no one will ever do this to me again. Also, you will find that your sense of self, what some people call the ego, it needs to be right and it needs to be good. So, obviously, if it can look at somebody and say, that person hurt me, that person treated me unfairly, then I'm in the victim role. And in today's society, the victim is the good one and the victim is the right one, whereas the perpetrator is the wrong one and the bad one. And so the ego feeds that kind of a concept through resentment. So how do we say this in a different way? Resentment may be our way of feeling like we are a good person. I'm also going to expose another one of these positive intentions for holding on to resentment, and it's a pretty interesting one. When somebody has wronged us, if they're going to stay in our lives, it kind of puts them in a position where they have to make it up to us or they owe us. Now, if we feel unsafe in relationships, especially unsafe to how people treat us, putting people in that position where they have to make it up to us 
is putting them in a lower position and us in a more, let's say, empowered position than them. So we try to gain safety through the power play of putting them in a position where they have to make right with us because of something wrong they did. That becomes our guarantee of good treatment in the present and in the future. So what should you do if you feel resentment and you want to let it go? Step one, you have to become completely conscious about what exactly it is that you are so resentful about. What happened to you that you felt was unjust and unfair? What did someone do that they shouldn't have done? Or didn't they do that they should have done? Going deeper, underneath this thing that you say you feel resentful about currently, what unresolved and long-standing history of being treated unfairly and unjustly is underneath this particular resentment? Am I confusing this person or this situation with someone or something from my past? Step two, you gotta ask yourself whether what you're really resentful about is the fact that you treated yourself unfairly and unjustly. Is there something you feel guilty about or some culpability in this situation that you can't forgive yourself for. For example, let's say that one day I decided to get super, super drunk and I blacked out and then I got raped. I may spend my life with resentment towards the rapist without realizing that the genuine resentment I feel is towards the fact that I got so blackout drunk that I even put myself in a position where that could happen. You will find that resentment and the blame that goes along with it feels better than self-blame and better than being blamed by them. Sometimes we can only let go of resentment towards others if we let go of the resentment we hold towards ourself. Step three, get really, really clear about the impact that this resentment is having on your life. I want you to close your eyes and think. If you kept this level or a more extreme level of resentment, what would be the impact of that in your future? What areas of your life is it affecting? For example, if I resent my spouse, I can see that I have no desire to make love with them. So we may eventually drift apart, and he or she or I may seek another partner. Step four, acceptance is a critical part of letting go of resentment because if resentment is present, it means you cannot accept something. Don't confuse acceptance of something with adopting something as your preference or endorsing it. But take a look at the situation that's causing you to feel resentful and ask yourself the following question. What am I unwilling to accept about this situation? Once you've answered that question, ask yourself why am I unwilling to accept that? If I accepted that, what would it mean or what bad thing would happen? The thing you have to see is that if you're in a state of resentment, you are pushing really, really, really hard against it. You're in rejection of it. You're saying no to it. But you can't push really, really hard against anything without putting equal pressure on yourself. Go ahead and try it. Hit your hand against a wall sometime and see if you can do it in a way where your hand does not get hit back. This is why, so often, people say that resentment is nothing but trying to kill other people by drinking poison. Once you realize this about resentment, you get to ask yourself the question, is it worth it? I'm not going to answer that question for you, nor am I the kind of spiritual teacher who says it's wrong to say, yes, it's worth it. It may be. It may be for you. But if you're willing to let go of it, you have to acknowledge that it is not worth hitting your own hand to hit someone else. Step five, you have to ask yourself really honestly, what bad thing would happen if I let go of this resentment today? Like it or not, the answer to that question is not, you're right, I'd feel better, nothing bad would happen. There is a part of you who is convinced that something really bad will happen if you let go of this resentment. So the question is, what is that? For example, perhaps the answer might be, if I forgive him or her, I make what they did to me okay and it's not okay. Or if I forgive him or her, they will not get how much they hurt me, so they will do it to me again. Or if I forgive him or her, I'm being like a human punching bag or a doormat, which is just pathetic. Or if I forgive him or her, I will never receive the justice and fair treatment that I need. So I want you to consider not only why you can't let go of the resistance and resentment and forgive someone else, I also want you to ask these questions relative to why you can't forgive yourself. What bad thing would happen if you did so? Step six, resolve the resentment wound 
that is not just about this current situation you think you're resentful about, but also the resentment that is underneath it all. To do this, I want you to use my process called the completion process. You can learn that process in depth in my book that's titled The Completion Process. So use this process directly with that feeling of resentment as it occurs inside your body. Now, another awesome thing happens when you use this process is that in the middle of it, great insight comes in as to how you can solve this current resentment issue that you're having. Step seven, deal with your powerlessness and your rumination differently. If you feel resentment, you are preoccupied with thinking about the causes and consequences of your distress instead of focusing on solutions to it. This is your being's natural way of trying to draw focus to the wound that is not healed, but the decision to look for solutions to the distress and solutions for how to make the present or future different in a positive way turns your focus in a different direction, a direction that will lead to results instead of pain. It may help you to look at the worst case scenario and not only to figure out what you learned from this situation that happened that you're feeling resentful about, but also what could you do? What power do you have relative to the worst case scenario? What actions could you take? This will help you to no longer fear being blindsided by it. If you're struggling with resentment, the reality is, is that you spend your time vacillating between two emotions. Those emotions are powerlessness and the terror and fear associated with that powerlessness and anger slash rage. What happens is you're looking at your life, or I should say this situation you got yourself into that's causing you to feel resentment is causing you to see your life through the lens of I am powerless to others or I am powerless to myself or I am powerless to the world around me. When you look at your life through that powerless worldview, now instantly, you want to feel better, and so the next logical step is to go into anger. So you kind of subconsciously pull yourself into anger, but then you go back to focusing on how you're powerless in the situations, and you go back down into that powerless type of a terror. And then you go back up into anger. So that vacillation back and forth is really the breeding grounds for resentment. So the question is, what could you do relative to this situation? to help you feel less powerless, more empowered. What power could you have in this situation? When we feel resentment, it is an indication that we do feel like a victim. Now, I'm really sick of this idea in the spiritual community that there is something super innately wrong with victim mentality. There's a lot of victim mentality shaming happening, and so even if you do genuinely feel like a victim, you can't admit it in this field because people go, oh my god, what a victim. The reality is you have to acknowledge that aspect of you. You've got to validate it. You've got to spend time caretaking it, but you don't let it lead the boat. Now that being said, once you have cared for and acknowledged the victim aspect of you, the victim is in a place of powerlessness. So what do we find? When people look back at situations that cause them to feel like they were treated unjustly through the lens of how did I cause this, how did I create it, or what was my role in it, and they take responsibility in that way, what is the natural byproduct of that responsibility? A feeling of, I had something to do with this, and so I am in control. We see that a feeling of empowerment and a loss of that feeling of disempowerment occurs. I just really want you to avoid slipping into self-blame when you do this. That is not the direction you want to go. Slipping into self-blame is even worse than blaming other people. In a vibrational sense, it does worse things to your body, your mind, and your emotional state. So without slipping into self-blame, just for the sake of you going into more empowerment instead of looking at the world through a powerless worldview, you want to look at how you have any responsibility for the role you played in this situation and how, knowing that, you could do something differently in the future. Step eight, take the situation where you feel like you were treated unfairly and unjustly and wrongly and try to find approval for what happened. Anything you can possibly think that is positive about that having happened. People who do not suffer from past traumas are the ones who manage to see them as a benefit to themselves instead of as a detriment. As hard as it may sound, do not take this as an invalidation of the pain. Simply do this practice for the sake of your own desire to feel better personally. Earlier in this video I explained that if you've got resentment, it is that you are unwilling to accept something that you judge as wrong or bad. You cannot accept something that you do not like. How do you get yourself to accept something? 
you get really aggressive with it. The most aggressive way to accept is to find approval for something. If you find approval, instead of saying no to something, you're saying yes to it. So focus towards what happened in a way where you can agree with it instead of disagree with it. Part of this process should involve looking at how the situation could have been worse than it was. This will help you naturally develop acceptance for what occurred. And remember, make this more about a commitment to your own well-being rather than anything else. 9. Meaning is the basis for suffering. What happens when we experience something where we feel like we are treated unjustly and unfairly? We add meaning to the experience. And not positive meaning, negative meaning. To understand how this occurs, I want you to watch my YouTube video titled Meaning, the Self-Destruct Button. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that the unfair thing, the unjust thing that happened is that my partner cheated on me. Now, maybe I make that mean that they don't love me or that I'm not worthy. It's that meaning that we add to the experience, in fact, that causes us pain. So on top of figuring out what painful meaning you added to this unfair experience, I want you to figure out how what happened is not personal. When unjust and unfair things happen to us, bad things, we take it personally. We never make it about what's going on in the other person's life, when oftentimes that is a crucial element to why we were treated unfairly. So, one of the keys to getting over this unjust and unfairness is to try to look for how what happened is not personal. It may have more to do with what's going on in the life of that other person. 10. Resentment is synonymous with the non-expression of painful emotional truths. What we will find when we're dealing with resentment, probably 9 out of 10, if not 10 out of 10 times, is that there is something that occurred and we did not express the way we felt about it when it happened, because we were afraid of the consequences of doing so. So what happens? Those feelings, because they had nowhere to go, become internalized. And that internalization of resentment instantly ferments those feelings, and they turn into resentment. Take a look at what you did not express in the situation that you feel resentful about. What's the truth that you did not share? Then take an even deeper look at why you did not express those things. For example, you may have been terrified of rejection or fearful of losing the connection, or you may have felt like it wasn't going to make any difference if you did. 11. Take a serious look at your own expectations. If resentment is present, it means that one of our expectations we had, no one lived up to it. So get clear, relative to this unfair circumstance, what you expected. Also get clear on what you expect currently, and communicate that to other people. But to understand more about this concept of expectation, I need you to watch my YouTube video that is titled, Priceless Relationship Advice, Expectations and Assumptions. Step 12. If you feel resentment, it means something is not how you want it to be. It means that looking at that situation, you are telling yourself that something should be that isn't, or shouldn't be that is. So you can choose to question your shoulds or your shouldn'ts. One of my favorite processes for this is Byron Katie's work that is quite literally called The Work. Conversely, you can realize that knowing what you do not want, how you don't want something to be, is a very great way of becoming aware of what you do want and how you do want something to be. And once you know that, you can focus with all of your effort, like feeding all of your focused attention and all of the energy into that direction, towards what you want, through visualizations, through taking actual action steps to create those things. You're headed in the direction of what is wanted, instead of ruminating over what is unwanted. The truth is that resentment, it kills relationships. But it is not a monster and it is not an enemy. Resentment is just a natural byproduct of having no resolution. So focus directly on creating that resolution, on feeling empowered, going in the direction of what you now know that you do want. And the byproducts of that lack of resolution will no longer occur. Have a good week.